you have to begin by exploring the, the distant desired future. But you've got to realize that there is a trap in that because that distant future may not uh, just be realized in one step. You've got to realize that you have successive horizons that you need to work against. Think back to what happened in the case of uh, Xerox. There in the uh, FARC laboratory, they developed some of their breakthrough ideas that will later become everything that we, come, we came to know in the computing uh, revolution. But it was the distant, what I call Horizon 3 future, and the senior executives were not able to identify that future. It was too much outside the consideration and the framework. So the breakthrough idea is therefore working with successive horizons. And so here is what I propose. You design the future state in Horizon 3. You address immediate opportunities in Horizon 1. That's the next four to nine months to 12 months. De depends how we choose to define these. And then really the, the breakthrough ideas where you execute your strategies, where you are able to transform your circumstance happen in the mid space. The mid space, which we call Horizon 2, is where you initiate course of actions and strategies that are explorative and adaptive. You don't put all the eggs in one basket, but you're developing something that, that a new strategy, a new course of action that allows you to lead your team in a new direction. And very quickly you realize whether you need to change course or you need to update any of the uh, processes or where you, you go to market. And as you do that, you gradually develop a culture of continual improvement, continual learning, continual resilient adaptation and adaptive behavior throughout the organization that leads you to create that future. What am I saying? I'm saying, think about these Russian babushka dolls where one is hidden in another, hidden in another, hidden in another. Think that it's a bit like that with your team. You are hiding a potential within a potential within a potential. And as you unleash one possibility, it leads you to the next possibility and leads you to the, to the next one after that. One innovation builds the platform to the next innovation. And that creates a platform that allows you to exercise and execute the next Innovation. As you review the success of Steve Jobs, what's amazing is how one step led to the next step and led to the next step after that. Perhaps you'd say that, that Steve Jobs had this masterful design of the future at the outset in his head, but I doubt it. I believe the true story is that the iPod and the iTunes developed the platform that then enabled the next breakthrough innovation, which was the iPhone. And the success of the iPhone and the embrace of that form factor and that interface experience with the touch screen created and invited the next breakthrough, which was the iPad. So what are you looking at? You're looking at the way of organic innovation, where one success builds the platform, technology platform and customer loyalty platform and business model platform that enables you to unleash the next breakthrough. That's the way to approach designing your future state. And the key therefore is to develop fast iteration and exercise and execute the new opportunities that you created and translate these opportunities for your next innovation.